Hello and welcome to Last Jazz Week tonight, episode number three already. Uh, there's plenty more has been going on in the Jazz Week uh, this week, especially considering we are still in the middle of a pandemic. But I have two great guests with me tonight. First up will be Alexander Donchenko, who has just won one of the rare over the board tournaments being played at the moment. And then 45 minutes from now, we'll have Pepe Cuenca, the heart and soul of Chess 24 Spain, who doesn't know him. But first of all, let me bring on uh, Mr. Alexander Donchenko. Alex, welcome. Hello, Fiona. Hello. It's really good to have you here. And first of all, congratulations are in order. You just won uh, the Tegernsee uh, Masters Tournament. So how do you feel? Uh, actually, I feel pretty amazing. Um, it's a, not only was it a strong tournament, but it was basically the only strong tournament that is being played over the board right now. And it might be for some time. So I'm very happy that I could do really well here. Yeah, well, we are going to talk. Let me actually pull up, um, pull up the results, pull up the cross table. It was a dominating uh, performance. We'll talk in a second about why Vincent was taken out of the tournament. But basically, you scored a uh, six and a half out of the eight games uh, that you played. Yeah. Uh, in this show, we don't look so much at the games. I will ask you later if you have a favorite game. But tell us how uh, how I guess pretty satisfied. But how how satisfied were you with your your performance and your play? Um, I'm well. The, obviously, the result is great. Um, the games were also uh, very good for the most part. Uh, in fact, I believe that um, let's say. I, I maybe missed out on half a point somewhere, but then again, I, I gained it perhaps even in the last round or in round six, where I could have easily spoiled something to a draw. So in general, I just think I played really well and uh, <laughs> without being humble, scored accordingly. <laughs> but uh, it's, 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 al it's, always, uh, it's always good when you can say that. It's always also good not to be too humble. Uh, let me show our viewers maybe a quick photo from, um, I believe your last game that you played this morning against uh, Paravian. So how were you feeling going into the last round? Matthias Blueburn was uh, still half a point behind you. So how did you feel going into that last game with the black pieces? Um, I was actually a little bit nervous, um, although there was, well, I, the, the, the fact is I was uh, winning the tournament mathematically with a draw. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my son of Bamberga would have been better in, in even in worst case scenario. And okay, when I realized that, I just decided to focus on the game because uh, basically there was nothing Matthias could do to hurt me. There was only something I could do to hurt myself if I didn't play well. And uh, how much? How do you actually go into? How do you deal with such a game? Do you, in a way, find it harder when you know that a draw, that a draw is enough? Uh, sometimes it is, in fact, the case. And um, I, I believe uh, t today it was also. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what I played for uh, well, as long as the position was unclear because um, it's, uh, well, I, I, I got myself into quite a tricky position and then, of course, I just played the moves to, to not make it worse. But um, in general, you, you can make these mistakes when a draw is enough. In fact, I remember still very vividly that I played a last round game against Vallejo mm -hmm. at the European Championship 2016. And uh, a draw would have been enough to qualify for the World Cup. But uh, he decided he wanted to play on and he played a very good game. And I was just not prepared to defend for a long time until it was already uh, too late. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I lost that game after a long struggle. Yeah, so something definitely, I think even for, I think it's a very difficult thing to do for players of all levels. Um, and in a way, sometimes it's almost not helpful to know that the that draw is enough. But let me pull back up the, the final cross table and let's talk for a second about Vincent Keimer. I think a lot of people uh, in Germany and internationally had uh, been looking forward to, to seeing him play. He played one game and then he unfortunately had to pull out. Can you tell us what happened uh, to Vincent? Uh, to me, it, it also came as very much of a surprise. When I arrived for round two, I just noticed that there are four boards instead of five. And um, the story with, uh, with him is that 
uh, I believe, a couple of days before the tournament started. He had uh, an exam at school. And one of the people who was in that room writing the same exam uh, was tested positive for the coronavirus. So well, all, I think it's called first degree contacts or something. Well, any, any, anyone who had direct contact with that person had to be quarantined, including Vincent. And he got the news on uh, basically, I think Sunday it was uh, after the first round. And um, there was just no room to, to make another decision. Uh, I believe the tournament organizer Sebastian Siebrecht tried, but there was uh, there was just no way around it, and um, he could he could not pl play and be around other people officially. Yeah, a great pity, of course, that he had to that he had to pull out. But uh, I think I believe he is well. From what I know, he hasn't caught it. I think he had also tested uh, negative, so I'm sure we will uh, we will see him back, uh, back soon. And tell us a bit about uh, the tournament. How was it to be playing there? I actually, when I prepared the show, I thought, well, I know you quite well. We're teammates, so I know you're a very active player. And I thought, let's see how much Alex has actually played during this pandemic. And I saw you had <laughs> had tournaments for all the last four or five uh, rating lists. So tell us a bit about how was it there at Tegernsee and how did it compare with other players that you played uh, over the summer and autumn? Uh, yes, I actually, well, I played reasonably a lot, more or less as much as I would do in normal years. Um, there are actually people who played more. Two of them played here. These are Leon Mendonca and Pierluigi Basso. They played basically nonstop uh, since June. Mm -hmm. But um, even th the way I played, I think it's very good that tournaments are still happening and that they're happening in good conditions. So that basically uh, I can still sit at the board and uh, focus on my game and uh, do this in a reasonable way. That, for example, I don't have to wear a mask at the board, which for me would, would be quite a handicap, I believe. Uh, were there any tournaments? So let's talk about the ones. Well, this photo, first of all, I should let people know the photo that's showing uh, here. It was taken during the Tegernsee. A tournament and I have written down where else you played since uh, since the summer. So you played in the Czech Republic in July. You played yes. the German Masters in August. Uh, then you played in Slovakia, is that correct? And the Bundesliga in September. That is correct. And I also played another tournament that counted for November. The Klaus Dieter Meyer Gedenktournee. Exactly. So I think it's five in total by now. And how, how did they compare and what were the different uh, measures for each tournament? Um, I believe in the Czech Republic and Slovakia, everything was very lax at that, at that time still. So they basically played as in 2019, more or less, mm -hmm. uh, which was quite refreshing, honestly. And I think I did great in both tournaments because um, honestly, it, it, uh, it kind of lifts you out of a depression when you kind of see that everything is still fine. Uh, I know it's it's a risk, but still, when you sit down at the board, you you still feel happy about it. Um, the turn and in Germany, well, as you can see in the photo, it's usually that you you play with these uh, uh, glass uh, uh, glass panels between the players, and basically, when you get out from the board, you have to wear a mask uh, wherever you go. But as long as you sit down at the board, uh, you can basically sit and think normally. Has the, the glass panel uh, been a problem at any point for you? I, I guess for classical it's fine, but have you had any time scrambles or any issues with it? Uh, in fact, I have played um, the Beale Chess 960 tournament. I was invited as a very late replacement there, and they played with exactly the same setup. Uh, the tournament was at a rapid time control, and uh, even though it had five-second increment, you did not want to go very low on time because mm -hmm. the five-second increment is wasted very easily when you have to uh, scramble through uh, that little hole in the middle of the board and try to make a long move. It's not, it's not working out nicely, so it's, it's only a thing for classical games, really. And, uh, well, speaking of uh, how you have played quite a bit uh, over the last few months, and now you just... Just today, actually, for people who don't realize that the Tegernsee Masters actually just concluded this morning. So you're a very fresh uh, winner of that. Um, do you have anything, any other tournaments lined up for the next week or months? Or how is it looking? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, it's, it's quite tricky because now, again, measures are b becoming more strict uh, b basically everywhere. So tournaments are getting canceled uh, all around the world. but. Uh, I'm, st I'm still looking and, um, okay, so far I've literally just finished playing, so for mm -hmm. the next month or so it's not necessary, but um, 
l later on. Uh, let's say I, I will keep looking. You'll keep looking. We'll be keeping our fingers crossed for you. Uh, with today's uh, result and your victory in the tournament, I'm now pulling up uh, the list. This is the list from November 1st of Germany's uh, top 10 players. So going into November, I think your last tournament was not counted yet in that. Um, I know it was, sorry. Uh, so you you go, went into November on a rating of 26, uh, 58, but you actually won uh, 14 points in Tegernsee, which is quite, uh, quite an impressive rating gain, uh, which means that your live rating is now 26, uh, 68, and you're ranked number 72 in the world. I saw you shot up uh, 20 places with your performance in Tegernsee. So tell us, is that an all-time high for you and how does it feel to to have this you know to be shooting up the rankings uh, i'm not actually sure if it's an all-time high in terms of live rating but since i don't plan to play anything until december it will probably be once the ratings are published um and of course it's, uh, it's especially at this level it is quite a big step 14 points is you, you need to win a lot of games or draw an absurd amount of games against very high rated players and um I, I hope the trend will continue once I get to play more tournaments over the board. Mm -hmm. um, and of, of course, it, you, you know, it, uh, since it is very fresh in my mind, of course, right now I'm just happy that the tournament finished and that I did really well. So we'll, we'll have to see how it goes from here. Absolutely. Tell us, um, what uh, what is next for you? Is something, for example, like 2700 or saying I, th I think you you and Matthias are actually very close for the the top spot uh, of German number one player how much do these things uh, mean to you these kind of um, milestones the German number one I was actually I think I was German number one for a month then I played the German masters in August and I lost some points after which Matthias overtook me Mm -hmm. And uh, the f the first time I, b I uh, held the top spot, so, so to say, um, it was quite a big thing for me. And uh, you realize this is the next step, so to speak. But now uh, Matthias is in front of me, m maybe not for long, hopefully. But um, I, I don't think it matters that much to me anymore. And I will j I'm just basically looking at the world rankings. So uh, I will try to get to, uh, cl at least close to 2700 with the next few tournaments. And um, basically... I'm not. I'm not uh, to trying to look at Germany. I'm trying to look for, for for bigger challenges. Actually, maybe for for all the viewers, tell us uh, how old you actually are, and how long you've been playing chess and all that. I know I'm taking it way back <laughs> now, but there we uh, go. I'm I'm 22 years old. I've been playing chess since I was eight, and I'm a grandmaster since I'm 16. And so you're saying, you know, you don't care so much about the German rankings. You're more looking at the world rankings. How is it for you? Do you always just go into a tournament saying, OK, I'll do my best? Or did you ever set yourself goals like, OK, I want to do this next or that next? So how do you how do you approach it? Um, that mostly depends on the tournament tournament. But um, in this case, for example, in general, I wanted to win the tournament. That's the set goal. But uh, perhaps even a more important goal is just to gain rating points, because really that is what matters right now. I'm not playing a tournament that has, like, let's say, an official title on it. I can't qualify for the World Cup. So I'm basically just trying to improve my world position. And uh, I can do this by gaining rating. It's very simple. And like this, every game actually matters. So uh, it's easier to stay motivated even when the tournament is going not, not so well. Uh, basically, I'm fighting in every game. Yeah, I think it's a good approach, and I've I've seen it firsthand. Uh, so you and I, you and I have been teammates in the in the French league for for a number of years now. And I have to say, I I've always been so impressed with your first of all your discipline, like how well prepared you came to the games, and like an incredible sort of motivation and will to win. What would you say are your your strongest points when it comes to competition chess? My strongest points, that is actually not so easy to tell, but um, I don't know, because uh, I believe most players have those kind of days when they just feel that nothing can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you get your, your kind of position that you basically know in and out. And um, somehow, for, for example, in this tournament, I had two such days where I won two white games against Nizipiano and Basso. And um, 
uh, I don't know, perhaps the, the positions I played in those games can be counted as my strengths, but it's just really about the feeling that you have during those games that mm. you, you, you have the confidence that you're absolutely doing the right thing. And um, I mean, if, if someone really plays amazingly, they will make a draw against you, but there is nothing more to gain uh, against you at that day. I like that. Uh, I like that set of mind. There's actually a question in the chat from Mary Pant, and I've pulled up the, uh, the cross table one more time. She's saying there was a Belgian player who was trying for his GM title. Uh, did you enjoy your game against Daniel Darda? And maybe can you tell us a bit more about him? Uh, Daniel Darda, uh, yes, actually. Um, well, I know he's a, he's a very young Belgian uh, player and I think the currently greatest talent in Belgium. Um, uh, my game against him was actually, it had kind of two parts. The first part was when we had some advanced Karakan and um, in fact, it, it went quite smoothly for me. I gained an advantage quickly with black and uh, got a close to winning and then winning position. And then basically things started to go south for me because I just didn't manage to close it off at first before the time control and then after the time control. And it became a very long struggle. And he made it a very long struggle. by uh, He sacrificed a piece temporarily in the end game um, to, uh, to prolong the game even more. And at some point, I, I was actually almost allowing a draw and I needed to be very precise till the end. So I think uh, he, he definitely has potential. I mean, mm -hmm. he's still 15 and there is really no reason to, uh, let's say, be pressed for time when you're 15 and almost a grandmaster already. That's true. Tell us a, a bit, actually, just a final question about the, the Tegernsey before we move on to a different topic. How was it there, like in these times of pandemic? Because usually at tournaments, I mean, people socialize. You might see people, you know, in the evening meet up or analyze or, you know, have dinner to like how how is this whole aspect of outside the chessboard uh, outside the chessboard during during these times um, at this tournament I have to say it was it was actually not so bad because uh, most of the players know each other or at least got to know each other very fast mm -hmm. and um, the, the first couple of days uh, actually restaurants and stuff was still open and uh, you could more or less uh, do what you would normally do um, after that, you of course the, you, you don't meet in, in big groups or anything, but still uh, you you generally see the players you play with a lot, and you can you can communicate with them, which is let's say more than for example I could do in Bremen, but mm -hmm. most of the time and it um, if you get to do that very little, uh, it just kind of weighs on you, uh, which I think is very important that you have some kind of social balance during tournaments, which I could I could fortunately have here, so I think that's also one of the reasons it went so well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good to hear. And very final question. I was curious. I, I haven't read about it, but were you guys all tested before playing or what were the measures before, like before the tournament? Uh, no, actually, only the foreign players were tested or, well, officially those who came from a high risk zone, which is basically everything foreign nowadays, uh, those had to take a test. OK, OK, I see. So let's move on from uh, the Tegernsee. And once again, my congratulations to you on a fantastic performance. And let's talk about something else uh, entirely. I want to talk about sort of everything that you have been up to let's say, since the start of the pandemic that hasn't been over the board classical tournament chess. And I found uh, for starters, my first question will be this, uh, this tweet by Olympia Urkan, who is one of, uh, you know, one of the most popular tweeters out there. And he said, uh, which I thought was high praise on September 1st, he tweeted, the 22 year old Alexander Donchenko is one of the finest at this banter blitz thing. So uh, tell us, first of all, had you seen that tweet? And tell us, how do you enjoy playing Banter Blitz? Uh, I might have seen it just by scrolling through this feed on Chess24. I don't actually have a Twitter account. Um, but uh, the, the Banter Blitz, well, the, it's, it's also a question of if it's competitive or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe this praise goes in so far that um, it's entertaining to listen to me, I hope. <laughs> And um, I, I'm very glad if this is the case. Um, I also enjoy like uh, playing viewers and uh, kind of it, it, it's a it's a bit it's a bit relaxing and still it has something to do with chess. Um, I don't know. I never really practiced this or anything. Perhaps uh, I don't know. People just like what I have to say. But that would be my guess. Do but, you think um, you're funny, yeah. or do you think you're entertaining, or what do you think makes makes it popular? Um, 
I'm really not sure. I I hope it's part at least partly the insight I give about the games. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm funny, most of the time it's uh, not not a conscious effort. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, and um, the re the rest of it I don't, I don't really know. Uh, I haven't I haven't done this too much, and honestly, I probably will not have the time to do this too much. But um, if uh, the, I, I have a chance to do that uh, to do it. Um, I believe it can be a fun format for sure. Absolutely. Well, very interesting. You are saying uh, you might not have the time. So what is what is coming up for you? What is going to, to keep you so busy? Uh, well, as I said, I don't have tournaments planned at the moment, but I hope to change that. And um, what I mean by that is more connected to, let's say, my approach to chess, because um, obviously, like, b Banter Blitz uh, is not, um, let's say, it, it doesn't count as chess training. Mm -hmm. So it, it counts as fun, entertainment, or s something you would do in your free time, basically. Uh, even, if, uh, even if you can earn some money with it, um, it's still... Um, uh, I, I generally try to focus on things that improve my game, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there are a few exceptions to that. So, for example, if I have the choice to analyze my Nidorf lines or play Banter Blitz, <laughs> all other things being equal, I would analyze my Nidorf lines, which might not be as much fun, but uh, it might give me more of an edge during the uh, future tournaments. Well, it, it, very interesting that you would say that. So this makes me curious. Um, let's say for the last six months or so, starting from February, March, when playing tournaments became a bit more difficult, how did you divide your your time um, that you were allocating to chess? Let's say uh, th that's actually uh, it, that's actually an interesting topic because um, I didn't. I think the first tournament I played was end of June. So I had um, almost four months without a tournament. I, I literally played until the start of March, so mm -hmm. there was no break there. But um, at, the, at the beginning of it all, uh, in March and perhaps April, um, it was actually very hard for me to focus on anything chess-related because, let's say, I, I could d develop a whole new repertoire in that time or I could solve a lot of, uh, a lot of exercises. But um, it's very hard when you have n no aim to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I didn't do a lot there. I, re I relaxed a bit. I took a, more or less a break from most chess things, which is actually something I never did in, in the past years. So perhaps that did me some good. And um, after that, once I knew that there will be this Czech tournament uh, at the end of June, uh, that's actually the time when, when I realized now I have to do something because now I know what I'm working for. I know that in one month or one and a half, I will have a tournament again. I will play serious chess again. And uh, this gives you a huge motivation to actually to actually work on your openings, work work on your other strengths and weaknesses. And um, I, I believe that it's it's very important to ha to have these kind of tournaments in front of you to uh, to really motivate you. Interesting. And now a question. Uh, so below your name, we'll talk about that more in a second. So usually we put the, the Twitter handles or the Twitch handles of people there. <laughs> uh, but since you don't have any of these and we'll talk about <laughs> we'll talk about that more. Uh, so I put your your chess 24 uh, username. I am no Belina. Maybe first question. Uh, what what prompt what inspired your username? Uh, I I honestly would have to look at when I created the account and think back a long way because I, I don't remember. I, I usually have some kind of point uh, with my names. M mostly it's a point that only I or a few select friends would understand, but in this case I simply forgot. It, 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 might, have, it might have as well been a random num number. So I'm so, so sorry, I can't, can't tell you more there. Never mind, that's okay. So uh, an easier question is how much do you actually uh, play online? Because I, I feel that compared to some other players, I haven't seen you in quite as many um, of the big tournaments, although I could also very well be mistaken. So how much have you played? <laughs> well, you might not have seen me because I wasn't at the top there, but um, in general, I do play not so many games online and even fewer under my own name. Mm -hmm. So people who, who uh, let's say, you can find them on, on, li on live servers basically around the clock. Um, I'm not one of those. Uh, I play perhaps on average, I would say maybe two, three games a day, and some days I just don't play at all. And... Um, it's just, it's just that online chess isn't really the same for me. Uh, I do play the, the tournaments occasionally, but since I'm not really into online chess that much, I can't say it's one of my strengths. And um, 
with, with online chess, I just think you, I, I'm missing some kind of fighting component there that you have to you have to really feel the, the opponent in front of you. It's uh, I don't know, it's uh, maybe a bit um, strange to hear that when you're used to playing online chess a lot, but. I think it's just not not the same and lacking some uh, very important part of over the board competition. Yeah, I think that uh, is a very valid point, and it's it's interesting because it's something we don't hear, you know, so often. Like just the other day, I was listening to an Ali Reza interview, and he was being <laughs> asked, you know, why do you play so much? And he said, well, I think uh, I'm just just addicted to it. Uh, so would you say that for you? I mean, it's really it doesn't strike me as that much as you say you may maybe two or three. Uh, games per day or some days not play at all so when you play is it more like very um let's say that you want to try out openings or is it like actual training i'm not trying to find the right words but i think you know what i mean like there's a purpose behind the games you're playing yes i I think you mean like what is my intention in my mindset when i play online and um most of the time i basically play when i have nothing better to do uh, and this actually reflects in my in my rating. Uh, and and not, not on this side here, I just uh, didn't play a lot of, uh, let's say, offhand games. But uh, on, on other sides, uh, I'm usually very low rated compared to players of my over-the-board rating. And um, it's uh, it might be partly because I'm not, not a very avid online player, but uh, it's also that um, I, I basically, I, I don't put in my best effort there. Uh, Sometimes even when I play tournaments, uh, I'm not not really that much uh, motivated to do my best there. But um, it is, sometimes, of course, uh, for example, when I play some ser- serious training games with friends, um, it's uh, it's different. I, tr- I try out openings, of course, but uh, you also have to have to see that you you can't do this under your own name because all the mm-hmm. games are available and. Um, it has been more than once already that I have seen online games of my opponent during preparation, and it, it gave me an edge during an actual game, which is of course something you have to avoid. Mm-hmm. So that's also why I think my main repertoire with black is like the Alakine against e4 and stuff like that online when you actually see me play. Very very interesting. By the way, there is a, a guy Christopho uh, in the chat who's saying hello, Van der team. He's actually a, a teammate <laughs> teammate of ours. So hello, um, hello to you, and hopefully, hopefully the, hello there. the French league. Uh, hopefully, it will be back next uh, year. And now the final topic. So uh, since this show is called Last Jazz Week tonight, usually we try and look at some of the things that have been on. We are in the middle of a pandemic, though, so there is not as much going on as always. But one of the events that took place uh, this week, and I actually just realized. Uh, a second ago that it was not played. I thought it was played in Moscow, but it was an online tournament. And that was the, the Razovaev, um, and maybe you can correct my pronunciation, uh, the memorial. And uh, it was won by Vladimir Kremnik um, after a playoff against Yevgeny Tomaszewski. I know you were playing in Tegernsee um, and you didn't have time to, to follow that so closely. But how do you feel about great players like like Kramnik, uh, you know, coming back now that he's retired from over the board chess and still uh, still winning strong tournaments like like this one? Uh, with Kramnik, I think first of all he's not really retired for that long. It's not like Kasparov or even someone like Karpov would come back to serious competition. And besides, as I said, this is of course a strong tournament, but it's still not a let's say, very taxing competition on your mental and physical state, like a a full-on tournament. So I believe, especially in such quick formats, um, your playing strength doesn't really go away uh, that fast or even to that extent. So a a player like Kramnik, who, um, let's say, if he still put in the effort, could very much be, let's say, in the top five of the world. Um, he, c- he can definitely uh, still play excellently online, rapid, and uh, all of that that's basically, that doesn't require an absolutely uh, 100% focus on his career. Mm-hmm. So th- that, th- it, he will, he, it will not disappear from, it, from his uh, skill set just because he hasn't played a couple of months or played only some serious, uh, some not so serious online games. Absolutely. So congratulations to Kramnik. And did you did you get a, ch- a chance to watch some of his commentary for Norway Chess with Judith Polgar? 
Uh, from Norway Chess, yes. In fact, I, I watched some of the rounds. I thought that, uh, that the two of them were quite entertaining. And um, it's, it, it's actually, um, I think it's very useful because you see, two, first of all, two very strong players, uh, but both, uh, both Judith and Vladimir, and uh, also two players with quite a different approach to chess. When you, when you hear them uh, talk about <laughs> variations, it's, uh, they, they often disagree, or they, or they even agree, but uh, they come to the same result uh, on a di by, by different means. Mm -hmm. And since they all look at the games without an engine, uh, it's basically their own unfiltered thoughts, and uh, I think that this kind of commentary is is interesting even to strong players who would normally just hear, let's say, uh, he just blundered a knight and the engine bar jumped from plus one to mm -hmm. minus 1.5. But here you actually see t what top players think and how they think, and there's there's more than one way to uh, approach a position, and uh, you you just you just have to kind of uh, f find your your own way to do it. Absolutely. So to close off uh, this topic, um, speaking of Vladimir Kramnik, and it's uh, something we touched upon briefly. So Kramnik himself, uh, if you guys uh, watching us are not aware, he joined Twitter only this September. So only a couple of months ago, make sure to give him uh, a follow if you aren't following yet. And uh, so, Alexander, we talked about how you are not on, on Twitter yet. So first question, any chance we will see you on Twitter? And second question, I saw uh, in the Chess24 chat from Fu Yi Vern uh, a comment. Uh, I think he is funny. Ask uh, Alex, is he considering to go the streaming route? So what are you think? <laughs> what are the chances that we will see you either on Twitter, on Facebook or on Twitch? Tell us. Um, the, basically, the, uh, about both streaming and Twitter, uh, my, con my concerns that stopped me from doing it so far are the same, uh, which is that I generally get involved in, uh, in things that I do quite a lot, mm -hmm. uh, which is to say, if I start playing a game, I will try to finish it. If I, if I start watching a series, I will try to finish it. And uh, unfortunately, if I would create a Twitter account and start f f following Anish Giri, I would have to read all his tweets and, until I can get a break. So uh, generally, I have a lot of friends on social media. So if something truly important is there, they, they will notify me. me shortly. And um, yeah, with streaming, it's basically the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I have considered it, actually, because obviously I, I have the spare time since the tournaments aren't as common as they used to be. But again, streaming is something you generally, if you want to be to become popular and uh, you want to uh, provide good entertainment, you need to really get into it. And uh, this is what I would call an auxiliary activity. Mm. Um, I'm, a, I'm a professional player, and that means I play, I train, and um, everything around that, if it's necessary or there's some other benefit to it, I can do it, but it's not my priority. And if I get into streaming, it might become my priority dis despite my better judgment. Yeah, I mean, I can uh, I can tell you it's fun, but it is uh, very, very time consuming. Maybe we'll have to wait, like with Kramnik, once you're retired, <laughs> you can join Twitter. Uh, but that's that's not going to be so anytime soon. Um, okay, Alex, are you ready for your quick fire questions? Time is flying by, so we already only have 10 minutes to go. Okay, I suppose I'm not ready, but that's kind of the point. <laughs> exactly. So my first bunch of questions, and by the way, after the quick fire questions, I will open the floor to questions uh, from the chat. So if you have any questions, you can let me know either on the Twitch chat, on the YouTube chat, on the chess 24 chat. Um, so my first bunch of questions will be non chess related and a bit later some chess related quick fire questions. Okay, so first question, which soup and you allowed one pass out of all the questions because I'm so kind. <laughs> so first question, which superpower would you like to have? Invisibility. If you could be an animal, what would you be? Mm. A human. <laughs> what is the stra strangest thing you have ever eaten? Uh, raw garlic without anything. <laughs> if you had a time machine, where and when would you go? So which place and which era? 
perhaps myself at the start of my chess career. <laughs> and if you could teleport, where would you go right now? Uh, I don't have an I don't have a, a witty answer to that. So I teleport home, so I don't have to travel there tomorrow. I like it. Good answer. Which three people would you invite to dinner? They can be alive or dead. Uh, so, so, sorry, where would I invite them? To dinner. To dinner. Uh, oh. Mm. I suppose one would be Fisher. Mm -hmm. Then uh, mm. that's actually a hard one because uh, the, the the other two are kind of wild cards. Mm. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I, I I'm I'm trying to think of someone quickly, but uh, it's hard. I know it's a tough question. It's it's hard. Yes. Um, Maybe outside chess. Yeah, p perhaps outside chess. Uh, if I could I could invite any two more people, um, well, probably s some interesting personality of the past. Maybe maybe someone like Einstein. Mm -hmm. And the third one, though, probably to a separate dinner, I, I would suppose some girl I like. <laughs> I like this, a separate dinner. Alex, describe yourself in three words. Uh, God, I am no Berliner of four. So um, let's see, what can we do? Uh, Mm. Oh, good. <sighs> Slow. Yeah, I, I wanted to say undecided. <laughs> That's one. Uh, mm. Very slow, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll have to pass on that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So, There's a few easier one coming this now. Uh, your favorite movie? My favorite movie. Uh, I probably haven't seen my favorite movie in a while, so I wouldn't know what it is. But since the, the only one I can remember right now, since I'm in shock, is the last one I've seen, which is about Spirit, the Wild Horse, a children's movie I really liked, and I watched it a week ago. Good, good, good. Favorite song? Favorite song? Um, probably Show Must Go On by Queen. Interesting. Favorite food? Mm hmm. I would say mandarins. <laughs> Favorite drink? Probably by pure amount of drinking herbal tea. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite subject in school? English. And what's your favorite sport besides chess? Uh, does dancing count as sport? Sure. Then I'll take it. I've seen you on the dance floor. You're very uh, energetic and passionate. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, and finally, what is, uh, according to you, your best quality? That I like to think things through <laughs> at almost every situation. You see, you see, you see what I did there. I just turned it around. Yeah, well played. I take my hat off. Okay, now for the chess-related questions. Let's see if they get any easier. Um, okay, first one. I think you will get this one. Which opening will you never play, or would you never play? Isn't e4f5 called the German opening? 
I, I didn't know that actually. I, 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 I think so. So let's go with that one. <laughs> Um, which chess player would you take with you on a desert island? Mm. Probably Alexander Fear, since I just learned that he is quite a good cook. <laughs> Shout out to Alexander Fear, who was also playing uh, in Tegernsee. And who would you not want to be stranded with? Hmm. Oh. I don't have anyone I really dislike, so it's kind of hard. It is hard. I'll allow you another pass. I Usually all my guests have used their pass here unless they had a joke answer, but when there's no joke answer, <laughs> it's hard. Uh, I mean, I, I, I could joke about some of my friends, but it's just not spot on, so. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it for another time. Do you have a, a favorite streamer, chess streamer? A favorite chess streamer. Um, I don't actually watch chess streams that much. Uh, I mean, it's uh, I generally watch tournament commentary and stuff, but it's not uh, someone personally streaming. Do you so. have a favorite comment? Actually, show us your T-shirt because <laughs> I can I saw it before when we were testing. You really should have a favorite streamer with that T-shirt. Do you have uh, a favorite commentator then? A favorite commentator? Well, um, Kromnik was doing a great job, but I'm not sure if he's an established commentator yet. Uh, Peter Leko is also great, mm -hmm. and Peter Swidler, but basically the uh, very high-level chess players. Uh, that's just <laughs> the, 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 the point behind it. I will take this on. Um, one word that describes you as a player. You know this is going to take a while, right? <laughs> I thought these were quickfire questions. <laughs> I thought those were over already. No, no, no. We're still just, they're now uh, chess, but they're still quick. Then, then I'm just going to go with well prepared since, since, since it, it has a... Uh, a, 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 a uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just about, I'll accept it. A classical rapid blitz or bullet? Right now, the rarer the better, so classical. Who is your favorite world champion? Mm, probably Fischer. And what would you be if not a chess player? Uh, a person doing something useful. <laughs> and finally, we're almost through. Last question. What would you name your opening if you invented one? Um, in fact, uh, there, there is actually a line where I was one of the first players to employ it, but uh, what would I name it? Hmm. I actually d don't really want an opening named after me. At least I don't care too much. Really? Why would I? I don't know, for the, for the sake of it, for the fun of it. The Berliner, obviously, says J Theory. The no Berliner. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the no Berliner, some crazy gambit against the Berlin. I like it. Okay, you made it through the quick fire questions. I think I saw one question from the audience and then we are gonna let you go uh, very soon. There was a question also from Fu Yi uh, in the Trust24 chat. Uh, about how much support do you get from the German Chess Federation for tournaments? For example, a tournament like the Tegernsee Masters. Uh, I think for this in particular, they actually, um, well, I initially the organizer was the one inviting me, but I think they are the ones who are actually taking most of the costs now. And uh, in general, um, I do get support for, a, well, in, in earlier years for the uh, for the really important tournaments like European Championship or, for example, Aeroflot or the World Juniors when I still played those. Um, besides that, uh, well, there are some tournaments organized by the Federation, like the German Masters. Um, and um, apart from that, for example, d during the last couple of months, we had uh, group training sessions with Gelfand. 
most of the strongest German German players, and I think uh, th th those actually actually benefited me. So I, I'm I'm glad they uh, they were there. That's great. That's uh, quite nice. Alex, uh, the time has flown by as I thought it would. Thank you so very much uh, for your time. Final, final question. Will you celebrate your victory? Will you be celebrating your victory tonight? Uh, tonight, probably no. There is nowhere to celebrate. <laughs> uh, and it's, uh, but, but I will probably celebrate with my family once I get back home. Fantastic. Well, then have a, have a very... Uh, have a nice journey home uh, tomorrow. Congratulations once again with the victory and thank you so much for, for joining us. It was uh, very interesting and a lot of fun. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, so that was Alexander Donchenko, everyone. Uh, some very, very interesting insights there. I had to say, even I learned, I learned uh, some new things about Alex there, and I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty, plenty more of him in the future. And now it is time to to bring on our second uh, guest. So let me see if he is ready. And our second guest is here, and it mm. is the one and only Pepe Cuenca. Pepe, how are you? How are you doing? Everything fine. How about you? <laughs> Good. It's very, it's kind of weird to be catching up uh, on a live show. I haven't seen you in so long. Yeah, like, I don't know how, how many years, like four or five years, maybe or something like that. <laughs> time, time flies uh, when we're having when we're having fun. We used to be colleagues actually here. You used to live in Hamburg. Yeah. And um, then I left, then you left. Now I came back, but you're you're in Spain now. Yeah, um, I'm back in Spain. <laughs> you moved to Ibiza recently. Is yeah, that correct? I'm, yeah, I'm right now in Ibiza, you know, because uh, during the pandemic, uh, we were in quarantine in Madrid and then that was too boring. So I said, OK, let's move to Ibiza. There's good weather. There's the beach so I can work from there. So, yeah, it's a fantastic place to work and live, you know. So you recommend it. Should we all be moving to, to Ibiza? Yeah, all Chess24 people, coaches, uh, whatever, all here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, live, are you living there? Is Divis also there? Are you with some other chess players or how? No, no, no. Divis is actually in, in, in Mexico right now, <laughs> from, <laughs> visiting his, his, his girlfriend. And uh, Anton is in Madrid, so no, I, I'm the only chess player here, actually. <laughs> so people should go, people should go and, uh, and visit you, absolutely. I've never been, yeah. so I might very well come and visit you at some point. Yeah, it would be awesome. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's talk about, well, that's, uh, first of all, it's very interesting what you're saying. So I'm going to bring up my first slide because I was sure that you and, uh, that you and Divas had been in Madrid this week. Um, so maybe let's start from the start. You're going to organize an event. Well, you are organizing an event together with uh, Real Madrid. I don't yeah. think they need any introduction. One of the biggest and best football clubs in the world um, and here is your tweet and Devious Street translation courtesy of Google. So mm -hmm. you were uh, at their headquarters or where presenting this event. Tell us everything about it. What is it? What is it yeah. about and when is it? Okay, so it's actually a charity event we're organizing with the Real Madrid Foundation and uh, you know everything that that we get in this in this event it will go to uh, the the social inclusion projects mm -hmm. that real madrid foundation is uh, actually doing every everywhere in the world and it's going to it's going to be like a 12 hours uh, stream with uh, like huge personalities uh, like from football for example solari he was a madrid player he was the the ex coach of uh, real madrid also alvaro arbeloa and uh, we'll have like the FIDE president, for example, as well, um, the Magnus Carlsen, and also some rappers, you know, freestylers. <laughs> so some, nice. some interesting people, yeah. Actually, I just pulled up the, the tweet. I saw that uh, FIDE tweeted at 7.30 tonight. So I just screamed to grab that uh, just before, shortly before we went live. So they tweeted out tonight, 
Magnus Carlsen will take part in a charity event on November 15th, so that's next Sunday, right. organized by the Real Madrid Foundation and Chess24.com. The 12-hour event hosted by GM Pepe Cuenca uh, and uh, I am David Martinez uh, will feature star guests including FIDE president uh, Arkady Dvorkovic. So tell us a bit more, what exactly can we expect on the day next Sunday? Well, we have a lot of things like, for example, uh, Magnus will be playing against uh, the football players and then, uh, you know, these freestylers uh, will, will do some freestyle on a chess mm -hmm. game, for example. And then we'll have a super tournament. We're still trying to, to figure out what, what kind of tournament we will have, we will have but it's going to be like, uh, you know, a similar story like uh, the Pepe and DBS Invitational that we had like a uh, couple of months ago, something yeah. like that, like full of 2,700 players or 2,600 players. And we're trying to gather 1,000 girls playing at the same time in Chess24. So let's see how this ends. But <laughs> Pepe, you are always one step ahead of me. I had prepared this as well. So oh, really? Okay. <laughs> let me pull it up. <laughs> so there we have it. Thousand women playing at once. Uh, an article that was published today on Chess24. You can read it both in English on the main page and in Spanish on, on the Spanish page. And uh, so we are going to try and bring together hundreds of women, hopefully a thousand from what I'm reading. Uh, so what is what exactly is happening there? Well, people can also, of course, read the article, but very interesting, especially for me, of course, uh, to see women promote uh, women chess promoted so heavily as part of the event. Right. So yeah, that's uh, just that's the idea, just to gather as as many women as as we can in in the website to promote uh, women chess. I think we we need this, and uh, actually we're just uh, you know sending. Uh, thousands of messages to, to all federations in Latin America and Europe, everywhere, basically. So it's just to have fun, you know, just uh, for the women to play against the users or between them. And I hope you to be there, actually. Actually, well, yeah, I was thinking like I hadn't because when I saw this is another another I screen grabbed this just before we went live as well. And I thought I should get involved, actually, like I haven't heard it. I haven't <laughs> heard of this. So you can count on me. And also, uh, Susie Gaboyan uh, from Armenia is in the chat with us. She's saying oh. she is also in, so fantastic. Awesome. And uh, Susie, great to great to have you with us. And she says uh, we are waiting for an invitation to Ibiza. So <laughs> looks like you will have a lot of people visiting you uh, visiting you there soon. Uh, let me quickly pull up, and hopefully this will work because I'm not the technically most gifted uh, person. But this uh, tweet here, so just there will be a short, um, it's just, uh, there is no sound, but the, the tweet of the Fundación Real Madrid, uh, where Solari is sort of announcing the event. And um, it's really, I think it's so, so fantastic uh, to be able to partner up with, uh, with a, a legendary team like Real Madrid. So tell me a bit about the photos um, from your tweet and from Divis's tweet. When were they taken? So when did you present? When and where did you present the event? Okay, so this was like ten days ago. I think it was the I think it was the twenty eighth mm -hmm. of October. We were in Real Madrid uh, headquarters in in Madrid, and uh, you know we were uh, with uh, Solari there. He was a very friendly guy, and he plays chess actually pretty well. Okay, he was playing an exhibition match uh, against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus was playing blindfold. Mm -hmm. And he actually played a decent game, so okay, very nice. It was a nice experience, and he was uh, eager to learn. You know, he wants to learn, and then he was very excited about this event. He he wants to make it like uh, not online only, but he wanted me to go there, like to to amazing <laughs> to be with him. And then the, yeah, he, he's a very he's a very nice guy, actually. Yeah. That's really really nice. Tell us a bit how how did the uh, event come to be? Was it Chess Twenty Four, who started the initiative, or Magnus, or Real? Like, how did it? How did it all start? I think the um, Real Madrid contacted like the Spanish Federation, and then the Spanish Federation suggested them like uh, we're like a um, nice company to work with, mm -hmm. and this is the way we got in touch. And you know, we started working working from there, and uh, you know, this is uh, the way it happened. You know. Sorry, let me just recut your camera. I thought I was going to fix it. Okay, there we go. Um, 
And uh, yeah, that's uh, really, really great news. I see someone in the chat saying, nice idea, wrong club, tell us. Um, and hopefully I won't offend anyone, but are you a Real Madrid fan yourself or? Not at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> I support one team uh, which is called Betis, uh -huh. uh, it's from Seville and actually I'm from the south of Spain, I'm from Granada so it's from my region. My grandmother okay. was a Betis fan so I, I wanted to be like her when I was a kid <laughs> and then so that's why <laughs> I am a Betis fan as well. Uh, okay, interesting. A uh, final question and I have to ask this to, to everyone still about the same event, about the, the thousand women playing at once, which I'm, as I said, particularly excited about. Was this a little bit inspired by this uh, Queen's Gambit effect or it was already set up before? No, no, it was just a random idea that Divis and I had, like the other day. We were not thinking about Queen's Gambit, so we always try to, to promote women chess in Chess 24 in the Spanish section. Um, we were not thinking about Queen's Gambit or anything, it just happened like that. Have you seen Queen's Gambit? I love it, yeah. I, I finished it like uh, four or five days ago, and actually uh, I've been recording some, some videos about the, uh, the series and the games that were happening there in, in, our, in our channel, in Chess24, in, here in the English channel. So I found it very interesting. The, I think the actress uh, does a fantastic job, Yeah. and the main actress, and uh, I think it's the best chess production I've ever seen. Uh, Kasparov was uh, one of the advisors, right? So, I mean, you can you can see it. Yeah, I think it really, really tells. And I always find it funny that there's still, I think there are still a small amount of inaccuracy, even in the chess scenes, at least from what I've yeah. seen around on Twitter. And I always find it funny that we chess players, you know, we are so <laughs> looking for any small detail yeah. that might be wrong. And then it's like, oh, you made a mistake yeah. there. <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all in all, really a great, uh, great, great show. And I, I look forward to, to seeing how this event goes. I hope, hope I can get involved. And if people want to watch your, your videos uh, about Queen's Gambit, I guess they can do, they can do so on the Chess24 uh, Spanish YouTube channel. And in the English one as well. And the English one as well. Yeah. Fantastic. So we can all check it out because sometimes, you know, Pepe, that I have a little Spanish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, not, just, yeah. not quite enough. So sometimes I have to watch your videos and yeah. I still, okay, we will talk about your videos later. I should go, not get ahead of myself. And uh, next right. up, I wanted to talk about something I saw. I think you did just yesterday or just yesterday it went live. You were uh, on a, a podcast, Abibir. Um, mm -hmm. So I found that, but I know nothing about what it was about. I, it just said, well, Google translates that our guest is one of the best Spanish chess players and probably the best live commentator of the game. His name is Pepe Cuenca and um, he lives chess uh, like an Argentinian lives football. So tell us a little bit about what that was about and what you talked about on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, the, this is one of the main radios in Spain. Mm -hmm. So they contacted me um, because one of the, the journalists that uh, worked there was a uh, Chess24 fan, actually. And uh, yeah, they, they asked me like uh, about Queen's Gambit, uh, about uh, how is to be a chess commentator, what's the difference between the uh, chess commentator and a football commentator, how did I end up uh, doing the chess commentary, for example, and all this stuff, you know. And it was... Um, a program uh, with uh, comedians, mm -hmm. so uh, you know it was it was a lot of fun actually. I can <laughs> imagine. Fun, you know, I was trying to fight them, so it was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, t and it, very interesting actually that you're saying you know that the the guy who invited you is a fan of um, of Chess Twenty Four and all that. Do you feel that lately, like with the pandemic, with so many people uh, being stuck at home, for example, football is not, uh, even if it's still played, a lot of matches are played in front of empty, in empty stadiums. So do you really feel this effect that there has been a, a chess boom during this pandemic? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, the, the numbers uh, have, gone, have grown uh, crazily, like uh, the audience uh, in the broadcast, uh, it's been uh, much, much bigger. 
So definitely, I think there's something to do, has something to do with the pandemic. Has to be, yeah. But I mean, the chess uh, is been the. I mean, chess has grown uh, gradually the last years, but I think the pandemic uh, has helped, you know. Mm. And we will talk a bit more later about you know your experience. How long have you actually? I'll, I'll save my question for later. I was gonna say, how long have you been? working within the chess world obviously you've been a chess player for a long time sometimes i think people even might forget you know you're a strong grandmaster yeah. you're not just not just a commentator um so how long i will ask you now before okay. i forget later how long a have you been playing chess and how long b have you been working within the chess world well, I started when I was five years old or something. My, my father just taught me. I was, uh, you know, uh, actually, um, you know, I wanted to make a lot of sports. So I was in tennis, in football, in, in basketball and in chess. And I was, I was good at chess and then I stick with it. And uh, working with chess only in the last years, because for me, chess was always like a hobby because I had my studies as well. And uh, I was working in the engineering field. But uh, in Chess24, I'm actually one of the few guys that started from the beginning and still there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that started, interesting, that started in 2014? What was 2013, it? yeah, 13. October 2013, I started working for, for Chess24. Just uh, mainly uh, at the beginning, I was just a translator. <laughs> I was translating <laughs> articles from English to Spanish and vice versa. And uh, I was also, uh, I was not a GM at that time. I was okay. actually an international master. So I was uh, creating the exercises of the video series that others were recording, you know. And it was only uh, after two years or something, they tried me as a commentator. And then, you know, it had, it had some success and I, I, I remained there, you know. This is actually a perfect transition to my next, uh, to my next tweet. Uh, because it has been quite the journey from being uh, from being a translator uh, yeah. to being a commentator. And just this week, you can uh, viewers can see the tweet is timed from November fifth. So this happened very recently. Uh, mm -hmm. During his banter blitz this week, none other than Levon Aronian said, uh, "Jose, which is your real name, so mm -hmm. uh, Pepe Cuenca." He has to be the most entertaining commentator in the history of humankind. So first of all, what did you what did you feel when you you know you heard Levon yeah, say this? Yeah, I have to be honest, it, it made my day, you know. So I really admire Levon Aroni, and, and coming from here it was especially honoring. So uh, you know, I just try to have fun, and then I try to transfer the fun that I have with chess to the others, you know. And I'm happy like people like Levon Aroni and uh, things like that, you know. Hmm. Actually, I have prepared, uh, hopefully this is going to work. I found this video uh, mm -hmm. with some of your best moments. So okay. let me see. I hope this is going. I hope this is going to work. Okay. Let's let me see. OK, there you are. <laughs> hopefully it will work with sound. So I'll just play a little bit okay. of this video. So for people, I'm not sure we have too many viewers who are not familiar with mm -hmm. your style, but just in case. So uh, this video, by the way, as you can see, uh, it was a, a best of Lo Mejor de Pepe Cuenca, a tribute. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is not my video, it's by El Peon Aislados. So let's uh, let's watch a bit of your best moments. OK. <laughs> I get I think people get the idea I actually I just um, I just discovered this video a few 
a few days ago. <laughs> By the way, it looks like I left the sound on a bit too late. <laughs> so my apologies to everyone who was wearing headphones. Um, but you really, I mean, I couldn't stop myself from, you know, laughing out loud when I, I watched this video and I was so happy to, to find it. Um, and I was curious as a, as a fellow commentator, first of all, where do you find the energy to always be so... <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not just a very energetic uh, person, you know, I like uh, doing things all the time. So for me, I like doing broadcasts uh, during seven hours is not a problem. Then after <laughs> finishing doing commentary, I can go and play tennis and then can, I can go dancing. So <laughs> that's not a problem for me. And the second thing is actually that uh, many people think that chess is uh, extremely boring. So for me, it's uh, completely the opposite. Uh, there is a lot of excitement, adrenaline and uh, so many mistakes. So uh, I just want to uh, transfer it, uh, how I see chess to, 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 the, to the rest of the people, you know? So that's, uh, that's the only purpose, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I think you really do. You have to be my favorite. I'm completely with Levon <laughs> on this one. You have to be my favorite uh, commentator. <laughs> Actually, when I watched that video, first I watched it by myself and I already thought, oh, this is so funny. And then later, because my Spanish isn't quite as good, um, mm -hmm. my boyfriend Alex, who's Spanish, joined me and he trillate, he had to, you know, pause the video and trillate. He was like, did you understand what he said? And I was like, no. And then he <laughs> translated and it was even funnier. So if you're watching this, get yourself a Spanish friend, get them to translate everything. And uh, yeah, I mean, a really unique, unique style. Uh, how did you, so you said you started out as a translator, then two years later you, you switched to uh, commentary. So you've been a commentator for roughly five years now. Mm -hmm. When you started out, I guess you were not quite like what we've seen. Or I guess the energy comes natural, but how did you develop as a, as a commentator? No, for me, it was like this. So uh, I couldn't imagine myself watching a chess stream for five, six hours. <laughs> so I thought, OK, we have to make this like, I don't know, different or something. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just uh, like to, to have a conversation with some friend in a bar. So we're just natural. So nothing is planned. And the way, uh, you know, the way we, we behave with our friends is just the way I behave in in the strings mm -hmm. so nothing nothing planned and just natural and see how it goes <laughs> very interesting and this like for example this ra -ta 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 -ta, or like this uh what's the other one mate conto mate, mate, mate. <laughs> okay uh, most of the things uh, i just uh, invent them but in particular this ra -ta 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 is a tribute to uh, one of my favorite uh, NBA uh, commentators. Uh -huh. uh, his name is Andres Montes. He passed away and he was the best NBA uh, commentator in Spain. And uh, he used to say like this, uh, ratatata, whenever uh, <laughs> there, there was a fantastic dunk or triple shot, you know, uh -huh. something like that. And do you get some inspiration? Because so often, I mean, also in this, um the tweet from the podcast which I saw, you know, you often uh, compare it to a football commentator. Do you get some inspiration from other sports? And also, do you do you actively work on developing as a commentator? Or as you said, it just all comes naturally and a lot of um, improvisation. No, no, I don't work like uh, looking for sentences or uh, trying to develop some new ideas. I just, uh, you know, I just feel it. I just mm. feel it and, you know, Nothing planned. Very, very interesting. Um, I want to talk, of course, I have you here on the show and you're one of the two people, you know, the heart and soul of, of Chess 24 Spain. But of course, the other one uh, is Devils and I, I will for sure have him on at some point as well. I stole this photo, which I like a lot from his, uh, his Twitter header. Um, tell us a bit about you two uh, just the, the journey that you guys have been on with Chess24 Spain over the years, you know, what has happened and what's next. Yeah. But first, tell us the journey until now and then, <laughs> then we can talk so, about it. I mean, we, we started actually from scratch, from zero. So mm -hmm. in the first streams, I think the first time 
I did commentary with Davis, which is now one of my best friends. It was like in 2015 or something. It was the, the U.S. Championship, and uh, there were nobody. There was nobody watching our stream. Probably just two or three people. One was my mom. The other one was uh, <laughs> the other one uh, was Davis' mom, and, and probably I mean just like that. And uh, we started working very very hard. So we we started covering basically every single tournament. In the in the chess world, and now after the the world championship between uh, Carlton and Kajaki, it actually exploded mm -hmm. in Latin America and and in Spain, and uh, you know it started to become a, a popular thing. And nowadays, like uh, whenever people want uh, to to watch a, a stream, they usually come to Chess Twenty Four to 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 watch the chess uh, the Spanish Chess Twenty Four team. So it started like that. It's been a long journey. And I didn't uh, know him before uh, working in Chess 24. You didn't uh, know him. I mean, I I, play, I I had played against him like a couple of games, but we were not friends uh, or anything. But that's so funny. I always thought that you guys had been like best friends for life. No, or something. No, no, no. <laughs> we became very close uh, since we we started uh, working in Chess 24, and now it's been a, a fantastic journey. We have traveled the whole Latin America for events, uh, for simuls, for exhibitions, for commentary, and uh, also in Spain. And, you know, I couldn't imagine the working in Chess24 without Davis, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Big shout out. And for sure, we will have him. We will have him on and, as well. And I need him, you know, because I sometimes I get uh, so much crazy. So he's the one the, which who is calm. <laughs> and then <laughs> I need him, you know? So, Probably. Yeah, the plus and the minus, yeah? So exactly. I think you need him and he needs you, so it's like exactly. a perfect team. Right. Um, how did you go on about it? You know, you said in the beginning from from two viewers, not quite, but uh, how did you manage to grow it? I guess you started with Spain and then you you target, targeted the South American market or how, how did that all happen? No, it's just hard work, you know, because the we wanted to uh, do commentary on every single tournament. So that's why people know that whenever they want to follow a tournament, it's going to be in Chess24 and it's going to be those two guys uh, who will be do doing the commentary. Mm. So just hard work, I would say. And, you know, and they like our style. I mean, some people don't, but most of them they do. So that's why I think combining the, this uh, new style of uh, broadcasting chess with uh, hard work, I think that was the key of success, you know? And you guys, I mean, you really cover every event. Whenever, you know, I'm as a chess fan looking online and there's something going on, no matter if it's online, over the board, <laughs> a rapid, a blitz, classical, you guys are always there. Like, how do you do this? I don't know. I mean, I haven't slept like too much in the last years, but... <laughs> It's been uh, like uh, quite rewarding, you know, so when we see people happy and there were so many people telling us, okay, you guys made this pandemic so much easier for us because there was nothing to do. I actually didn't have a free day from March till July, you know, <laughs> during pandemic. We were doing streams like four or five hour streams uh, every single day from, from March to, to July. You know? so, <laughs> finally, I needed a break, you know, and then I brought all my friends here to Ibiza and then we were like going to the beach and then doing some uh, some parties at home, you know, because uh, you can't party outside. Yeah. As you know. <laughs> but uh, a well-deserved yeah. break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally. <laughs> and so now is uh, now is November. So what's what's coming up for you guys over at uh, on the Chess Twenty Four Spanish site? Well, I mean, we're gonna cover the, the whole tour. So basically, the, there's a tournament uh, per month. So that's like ten days uh, per month of commentary. And then we have our only internal events. For example, we are the ones who invented the Bante Blitz Cup. You know, <laughs> nobody knows this. But we started with the Bante Blitz Cup in Spanish. Credit was, where credit is due. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great success in Spanish, and then we extended it to, to English. And uh, we have our own Bante Blitz sessions, like our internal leagues, where we face another grandmaster or something like that. We always have something in mind. And then I usually, uh, you know, uh, upload games of the day or stuff like that, so to keep the, the, the channel quite active, yeah. 
Pepe, after this, after this show, I will send you a message to ask you for your tips for where the hell do you find the energy and the time? <laughs> like, it feels like my day has only half as many hours as yours or something like that. Um, okay, so that's all, uh, all for the chess part. A lot to look forward to uh, on Chess 20 for the Spanish side and, of course, the English as well, where you also are uh, in involved uh i want to before we get to the quick fire questions so i have a list of quick fire questions and also viewers can ask you questions as well so they can start doing that now and i'll i'll read them later uh, but just one last thing i wanted to talk about before the quick fire question is so people know you're a chess grandmaster they know you're a commentator they know you're this and that but what a lot of people I think don't know is that you also have a master's in engineering and a PhD in applied mathematics. Um, so tell us a bit about that, which I guess will come as a surprise to, to at least some of our viewers. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, chess was always a hobby. So when I was 17 or something like that, I was uh, 2400 or something, I was an IM. Uh, but it was clear that I was not going to be the world champion. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, I was 100% uh, convinced that I had to go to the university. So therefore, I studied civil engineering uh, five years in my city, in my hometown, uh, Granada. And then the, when I finished, actually, uh, the engineering field, the construction engineering field was terrible in Spain because we had this crisis in 2010. So, uh, you know, I was applying for scholarships and then I got this Erasmus Mundus scholarship, which was uh, one of the best experiences in my, in my life. Mm -hmm. I studied uh, two years abroad, uh, mathematical modeling in engineering. I was in Italy, Hamburg and <laughs> Poland for two years. And then after this, uh, oh, I mean, all the time I was trying to combine with chess, you know, mm. but I was almost quitting chess, actually. It was just when I finished this and then I was hired as a researcher and uh, teacher at the University of Hamburg when uh, Lawrence, <laughs> Lawrence Trent. <laughs> I remember those friends. days. Yeah, he's one of my best friends. He studied in Granada uh, when I was uh, 19 or something, so we became very close. And he actually uh, told me uh, that uh, he was coming to, to Hamburg mm -hmm. to record some videos for some chess company. And then <laughs> it, it turned out to be Chess24. So this is the way he introduced me in the in in the company and that's how i ended up there but, so you uh, were by coincidence in hamburg which is the headquarters huh i was working in hamburg i mean uh, <laughs> I, I it had nothing to do with chess <laughs> and this is the way i ended up in chess 24. i didn't even know that chess 24 existed or or, or something like that you know <laughs> shout out to lawrence trent the yeah. man the make the man who makes dreams come yeah, true <laughs> <laughs> what yeah what a journey and but these days so for how long has chess been your full-time occupation like uh, since i finished my phd uh, chess uh, is my full-time job like a uh, commentator you know yeah. and i also try to do some engineering stuff uh, like every four or five months i work in some project as a freelancer but my full-time job is, uh, is is chess 24 right now is a uh, commentator yeah absolutely very nice and I think the chess world is very, very lucky uh, to have you. I see in the chat, I'm homeless on Wi-Fi, saying, imagine being Pepe's neighbor, though. Have you ever, <laughs> <laughs> have yes. you ever had any complaints? Of course, you know. I mean, once the police came to the Hamburg <laughs> office, you, you don't know that? No, I didn't know. <laughs> so it was actually, the, fir the first year I was doing commentary. This has to be like 2015 or something, or 14. I was in the Hamburg office where you used to work. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was doing a commentary on the U.S. Championship, and uh, because of the time difference, uh, uh, I was working at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. So I was at some moment I was getting excited and I was shouting like a beast, and then suddenly some police people knocked the door and then, uh, what are you doing? Like uh, to the wall, to the wall, and then all in German, I couldn't understand any, any single word, and I was trying to because somebody called the police, and then they tell them that there was a, there was a chief stealing things in the building and shouting in some weird language you know and <laughs> i had to convince them that i was a chess commentator in my terrible german <laughs> and actually after half an hour one hour you know after showing them some pictures in google 
uh, about myself and uh, chess tournaments, they actually believe me and then they <laughs> they release me. I can't believe I never heard this story before. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100% true, you know. I mean, especially, I can just imagine, like, as a neighbor, if I, if let's say you just moved in, then I was your neighbor and you were doing this, da, 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 da. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I would be I, terrified. I'm a very clumsy guy, so you know. So even when I when I write on my on my keyboard, you know, it looks like I'm demolishing like uh, some stuff, you know. So. <laughs> Commiserations uh, to your neighbors. Speaking of the da da. I see uh, Fernando Quintero in the chat is asking how did the rat attack come to you? I think you already said this, uh, yeah. but I people, by the way, tomorrow or even as soon as we're done, we'll be able to go back and replay the whole show. But I'll just since everyone is such a big fan, I'll just let you say it one more time. Uh, yes, it's just a tribute to one of my, my favorite uh, NBA commentators. Uh, his name is Andres Montes. He used to do rat -a -ta uh, whenever uh, some uh, dunk or triple shot was happening in the game. You know? Very nice. Pepe, are you ready? Time has once again flown by. We only have about five, six minutes to go. Are you ready for your quick fire questions? Let's go for it. Let's see what, what, you, what you have prepared. <laughs> yeah, I hope you have never listened to them yet. One week I will oh. have to start. Okay, you haven't. Great. Because I'll have to get some new ones because otherwise if people come prepared, yeah. it's not so much fun. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see if you can be faster than Alexander Donchenko, who took quite a lot of time. Remember, these are quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> first question, which uh, and the first one will be not about chess, later about chess. Okay. Uh, which superpower would you like to have? Hmm, I would like to fly, yeah. Good. If you could be an animal, what would you be? So probably a lion so I can eat meat without feeling guilty, you know, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> which compliment do you re uh, receive the most? No, not so many. Are you crazy, stupid Spanish guy? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> nice compliment. Uh, what is the strangest <laughs> thing you have ever eaten? Yeah, for sure some insects in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia <laughs> while I was there in a conference uh, working for a university like 2015 or something. Did you I like them? I don't want to know what they were, you know, so. Did, but they, were they good, whatever they were? Uh, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> I didn't like it, but, you know, you have to try. Yeah. If you had a time machine, where and when would you go? So which era and which place? Probably to the Roman Empire. You know? Very interesting. And if you could teleport right now, where would you go now? Probably to some Caribbean country, let's say Puerto Rico or Cuba would be nice. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm uh, I'm in on on that teleport machine. <laughs> um, which three people would you invite to dinner, and they can be dead or alive? Okay, so some chess uh, person, for example, Mikhail Tal, mm -hmm. and then I will take Rafa Nadal and Michael Jordan. Yeah. That would be a nice dinner. Yeah, and, I'm a yeah. huge Rafa. I'll come with you in the teleport also at the dinner because I'm a huge Rafa Nadal fan. <laughs> so I just invite <laughs> myself. Awesome. Everywhere. Um, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, which is your favorite? Nowadays I'm using Instagram a lot. And uh, like uh, some years ago I used to, to use uh, Facebook, but nowadays Instagram mainly. Yeah. So below your name, there is your Twitter, but maybe you can tell us what is your Instagram so everyone well, I think can follow Pepe, you. And then this uh, Pepe slash uh, Cuenca. Okay. Or maybe it's not even like that. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. That's, that's... We'll get someone in the chat to look it up and uh, put, it in the, put it in the chat. Um, <laughs> describe yourself in three words. Mm, I would say uh, familiar um friendly and uh, yeah a little bit crazy <laughs> a little bit <laughs> a little bit just a little bit <laughs> what is your favorite movie american history x yeah and your favorite yeah it's a it's a great movie i there's one scene that i find very hard to watch but yeah, it's 
hard, but you know, it, it teaches a lot of things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's important to watch as well. Susie, thank you so much. The Instagram is Pepe underscore Cuenca. Mm -hmm. um, your favorite uh, song? My favorite song, probably uh, basically every song from Joaquin Sabina. He's a Spanish uh, singer, very famous here. I'll have to check him out. So I guess he's your favorite artist. Yeah, probably. Yeah. What's I like, your... like different kind of music, you know, classical music uh, to study, to work and then reggaeton, <laughs> Latin <laughs> music to dance. So, you know, whatever works. Actually, do you ever, so you listen classical, it's hard to picture you yeah. in a way, you know, yeah. I, I do it, yeah, and I love it. But, you know, I, I listen to rock or pop or, you know, hip hop. I love hip hop and Spanish rap, you know. So. Yeah. What is your favorite food? Uh, basically anything that my mom cooks, for example, the meat with the Spanish fries and, uh, you know, just uh, egg. This is amazing. Basic, it's, but tasty. Yeah, right. Your favorite drink? Probably, I mean, the, when I go out, mojito, and then, the, you know, I used to, to love in Germany this choco drink, <laughs> like chocolate milk, you know? I love it. So. I'm still hoping, fingers crossed, there will be some uh, Christmas markets, which are so nice in Hamburg, and they have yeah. choco milk with all kinds of different uh, yeah. alcohol mixes, so finger, fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> And uh, what was your favorite subject in school? Yeah, probably mathematics. <laughs> your favorite, and, you know, physical. Yeah, all this physical yeah. education, you know, like sports. Speaking of sports, what is your favorite sport besides chess? Uh, I play tennis uh, almost every week and uh, also paddle, which is some sort of tennis with walls. It's not squash. But it's uh, it's only played in Spain and Argentina and Mexico. So okay, it's very popular nowadays here. Look into it. What is your best quality? Would you say? Hmm, my best quality. I'll just pass. I can pass on, on one. On one, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I, I pass. Okay. <laughs> so now for the chess questions, and we're really in time travel here. Which okay. opening will you never play? Probably the Latvian Gambit. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Which chess player would you take with you on a desert island? Hmm. Maybe Magnus Carlsen, so I can learn from him, you know, and then he likes sports, so probably, you'll, you know, we will get along pretty well soon. Good answer. And who would you not want to be stranded with? Lawrence Trent. You know, we lived together for three years, so enough. You know? <laughs> <laughs> One word that describes you as a player. Uh, Shout out to Lawrence again, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm a good fighter, actually, and a very bad technique, but a good fighter. Your favorite time control, classical, rapid, blitz or bullet? Classical. And your favorite world champion? Magnus Carlsen, yeah. What would you be if not a chess player? Maybe uh, an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Why not make use of all those years, all those studies, yeah, all those right. diplomas? <laughs> and last question, what would you name your opening if you invented one? Yeah, probably the Ratatata opening. <laughs> I don't Pepe. want to use my name, you know. <laughs> This is the perfect way to end the show. This has been so much fun. Uh, thank you so, so much for joining me. Um, some really interesting insights. I love the story with the police coming into the Hamburg office. Um, so thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure having you on. Yeah, thanks, Fiona. I really like your work. You know, we are good friends from a long time ago, and I re I'm really happy to share this, this, this space with you here. Thank you so much. And hopefully we'll see each other in Ibiza, in Ibiza yeah, next, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Um, thank you so much again. Everyone should check you out. Uh, check out uh, his videos on Chess24, on Chess24 Spain. Make sure to follow him on, uh, on Twitter, on Instagram. Pepe, thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good Take night. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, Okay, so that was Pepe, everyone. Uh, what a what a show it's been! It's been so much fun. We have one minute to wrap up the show. 
so since this is last chess week uh, tonight, there has been one developing, one breaking story tonight. Iran faces suspension from FIDE over policy of in-your-face racism directed at Israel. You can read that story uh, on Chess24. We will dis discuss this uh, in more detail uh, the upcoming week. And uh, finally, uh, if you're looking to improve your chess uh, during this pandemic, coaches uh, who are, by the way, uh, the host of this show, I know we talk a lot uh, about Chess24, but this is a coaches show and they are launching masterclasses, which you can get at a discounted price of only six dollars. Uh, the first masterclasses will be with uh, Raluca Skircha, with Kostya Kavutsky and Jesse February. And you can head to coaches.com to learn more about these. So a fun a fun way to to work on your chest during these uh trying trying times this is all for me for this week hope you guys enjoyed the show thank you so very much uh, for watching and i will see you next week for another episode take good care uh, take care of yourself